So you've had a blood clot, now you're on a blood thinner. The next question is, how long will you need the blood thinner for? The first scenario is that we know exactly why you had the blood clot. Something happened, maybe it was a surgical procedure, maybe you had some sort of injury and you needed to be immobile for a period of time. If those happen, and we know that the clot happened as a result of those, we only need to treat you for a short period of time. When I say short period of time, what I mean is three months. Some people will say three to six months and I'm okay, let's compromise on that. But you won't need longer treatment than that as long as the reason went away. So you're, you've, you've recovered from your surgery, you're walking around, your injury went away. As long as those are correct, short period of time, that's all you need. The second situation is when we can't identify why you had the clot. Believe it or not, that is really common even in modern times. When we can't identify the reason for the clot, it tells us that there's probably something about you that is causing the clots. What that practically means is that if we take you off of the blood thinner, you may have another clot at a high likelihood. Obviously, we don't want that, and for that reason, we will probably recommend a longer period of treatment, beyond the three months, beyond the six months maybe. The third category is when your blood clot happened as a result of cancer. Some cancers cause clots such as deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. If that happened, we know we need to treat you for as long as the cancer is active. So as long as there's active cancer or active cancer treatment, we probably need to keep you on the blood thinner because we know that if we take you off of the blood thinner, you may have another clot. A fourth scenario that is worth mentioning are clots that happened uh, as a result of hormones. What I mean by the word hormones, it could be testosterone sometimes, but typically when we use that phrase, we mean estrogen. Clots may happen uh, either because of estrogen in oral contraceptive pills, they could happen in association with fertility treatments, they could happen in association with estrogen that is given as hormone replacement therapy, or they could happen around pregnancy and after delivery. Clots that happen in these situations uh, are sort of a special category that require special attention and special expertise. Face value, if you take away the hormone, if you're not exposed to hormones anymore, the risk of more clots of that kind is probably low. But the trick is, uh, or the tricky part I should say is, that it is not always easy to eliminate the hormone, or maybe it is necessary to expose a person again to hormones. For example, maybe a person wants to get pregnant again. So again, this fourth category of hormone-associated um, uh, clots is a an, an, uh, category in and of itself that really requ requires special attention. However, there are more factors that we need to think about. I wanna walk you through some of those. The first factor is bleeding. The main side effect of blood thinners is obviously bleeding. So we know that if we keep a person longer on a blood thinner, the chances of bleeding go up. We don't want to put a person on a blood thinner for too long and result in a bleed. The problem is that it is not always easy to identify who will bleed and who will not. Now, sometimes it's easier than other times. So for example, if a person has a tendency for falls, we know that they may fall, injure themselves and bleed. If a person has an active peptic ulcer, we know that they may bleed into their stomach. If a person has some sort of uh, brain malignancy or a brain injury or a head injury, we know they may bleed into their head. But oftentimes bleeds happen in people in whom we did not have these risk factors and it was hard to identify that in advance. For that reason, anybody who's receiving long-term blood thinning really needs to be followed by an expert. The reason is you need to be vigi vigilant for any change that may elevate the risk for bleeding or for any warning signs that may elevate the risk for bleeding or may tell us that the person had a small bleed and we need to avoid a bigger bleed. When we decide about duration of therapy, we always have to balance the risk of more clots and the risk of a bleed as a result of the blood thinner. Sometimes, after stopping a blood thinner, we want to make sure that we made the right decision. Now, knowing for sure is hard, but there are some tools that help us at least kind of get a sense of if we're in the right direction. One of those tools is a simple blood test called D-dimer. If we draw a D-dimer and it is elevated when you stopped your blood thinner, it tells us that there's a higher risk for more clotting. If the D-dimer is lower, it doesn't mean that there is zero risk for more clotting, it just means that on average, there's lower risk, and that may support our decision to keep you off of a blood thinner. 
Also, there are various calculators that we can use. We can plug in information that is relevant to you into these calculators, and we can assess, again, it can't tell us for certain if there will be a clot or if there won't be a clot, but it can help us assess your relative risk for more clotting. So examples of factors that go into these calculators are age, because we know that older people may have a high risk for clotting compared to younger people. By the way, they also have a high risk for bleeding. Another factor is men versus women. Men have a high risk for more clots. People who are overweight or obese have a high risk for clotting compared to people who are lean, etc. There are other such factors. I'll try to put a few of those calculators, kind of links to those in the comments section or in the video description, so you can kind of look into those if you wanted, if you wanted to do that. All right, before one of you asks me about hypercoagulable testing, thrombophilia testing, genetic testing for why clots happened, let me, let me talk about that for 10 seconds. Yes, those exist, and yes, sometimes they are useful. But in everyday life and the treatment of most blood clots, the value of those tests is lower than you'd think. So let's just agree that usually people don't need testing for those. Sometimes they do, but that is really in specific scenarios. And that's a subject for maybe another video sometime. So that's what I had about how long to treat a person after they've had a blood clot. First thing again, think about the category. Do you know why the clot happened? Maybe you don't know. Maybe it was associated with cancer, or maybe it's that special category of hormone-related clots. Always balance the risk of bleeding versus the risk of more clots, and do your best to factor in patient-specific characteristics such as age, weight, sex, etc. If I missed anything, please comment, ask me. I'd love to just answer your questions. Maybe I'll add something. It really helps me out. Please like and share the video. That helps the channel out a lot. And please subscribe. I'll see you next time.